database, the transparency with which your elections are conducted, and obviously the manner in which your recounts and contests are conducted. Uh, we thank the court, and I want to myself again thank the court for the time that they have spent, the carefulness they have spent, and we look forward uh, to a decision from them at the appropriate time. I'll take any questions. Uh, the Coleman um, closing basically asked the judges to bend some of their rulings and, and allow for a more uh, common sense approach to counting some of these ballots. What do you say to that? The court has ruled consistently uh, throughout this case with uh, Minnesota law. Uh, the state legislature uh, is free at any time to revisit the law of absentee voting. I said before that I would frankly support early voting. If I were asked by a legislator in Minnesota, I would say you ought to have early voting, you ought to have more permissive absentee ballot laws, but that's a decision for the state legislature to make. And what this court has done appropriately is enforce the law as it has been written by that legislature. And Minnesota has had a long, proud tradition of making voting easy in person on election day through same day registration. It has among the most liberal and, and, and progressive laws on voter registration in the country, perhaps the most progressive law on voter registration in the country. And that is because the legislature of this state has made a fundamental judgment to make it easy for people to vote in person and uh, it has not made a similar judgment with respect to absentee voting, where, for example, you still need a reason to vote absentee. It's not no-cause absentee, as many other states are. There is no early voting, as there are in other states. So that's a decision for the legislature, and I'm sure uh, that there will be many in the legislature who, who will want to hear those recommendations from Mr. Coleman's team or from others. But that's, that's, not, the, that's not the job that this, that this court fills. What about the February the 13th ruling changing the rules and putting uh, illegal well, I think that I, I just I just disagree with that entirely. The the uniform standards ruling on the 13th was just that it was a ruling to make clear that the law as written in the books by the legislature uh, was going to be enforced. You can go back to that ruling and look at any one of those things, and I ask you, which one of those things is not in the law? The law says the voter has to be registered. The law says the witness has to be registered. The law says it has to be the genuine signature on the, app, on the ballot of the same person who made the application. The law says there has to be an application. The law says that, uh, that, that the ballot application must be signed. So that was the law. And what the court did in, in, in all of its rulings was simply reaffirm that this court was going was gonna to act in conformity with existing Minnesota law as the legislature of this, uh, of this state has passed. Uh, uh, and, and as the Supreme Court of this state, in several uh, Supreme Court opinions, including Bell v. Ganaway, including Erlinson, has said, uh, with respect to absentee balloting, that it is, that it is a privilege that must be, uh, that, that is enjoyed by voters to the extent that they comply with those legal restrictions and requirements. You know, it's a funny, it's a funny thing about the tie. So, uh, I may have mentioned last time that uh, I was asked about this tie, uh, which is that I picked it up in an airport because I got a lot of comments on, on, the, on the, the blogs that, uh, about my lack of tie diversity. So I picked this up at the airport, and one of you asked me the first time I wore it, is that your lucky tie? And since I didn't have a lucky tie, I've decided to adopt it as my lucky tie. Last question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll do my thing and then, then uh, just a brief statement. I'm going to re respond. I, I know the lawyers say leave this to the lawyers, but uh, what Elias didn't talk about is the application of the law. And the reality is if you look at the February 13th ruling, it, it would mean that if you voted in Carver County and you had a witness who might or might not have been registered, that if you lived in Minneapolis, that same vote would count. And the law and the Constitution really require equal application of the law. But I'll let the lawyers talk about the... Uh, complexities of constitutional issues and due process and equal protection issues. Just a, a general statement, and that is, uh, if you listen to the argument of both the, the Franken campaign and our campaign, it, it's very clear uh, that there are hundreds, if not over thousands, of Minnesotans who, whose votes were not counted on election night who will, and will now be counted or should be counted. And that's a good thing. Now, the reality is, is that the, the margin between the candidates, uh, be it on election night, be it when the recount began, or when the canvassing board completed its work is very, very thin. Very, very thin. And clearly there are more votes out there right now that haven't been counted, that both sides agree need to be counted, should be counted, uh, than uh, separate 
either myself or Mr. Franken. And so, in, in the end, what I feel uh, uplifted about is the opportunity that we've had through this process to enfranchise a lot of Minnesotans. If there's one thing that I think had to touch everybody who watched this proceeding, it's the voters who came in who talked about the importance of the right to vote. Uh, whether it's voters who voted since the time of Dewey and uh, of Truman and Dewey, that race, uh, to uh, first-time voters, uh, that they have a right to have their vote counted. Uh, and, and we take that seriously. We started this case, one of our early voters, I think it was Gerald Anderson, a 70-something-year-old blind uh, St. Paulite, signed his ballot uh, in the wrong place because his wife kind of directed him to sign it there. His vote should count. His vote should count. Uh, and uh, hyper-technical restrictions on, on, uh, on absentee ballots don't serve any public purpose, don't serve the interests of the people of Minnesota. So the bottom line in this is that both sides agree that there are a lot of votes to be counted. Uh, this uh, contest has given folks the right to have their vote counted, the ability to have their vote counted, and I think that's a pretty good thing. Uh, whatever the outcome is, ultimately we'll, we'll get to a conclusion in this, but the bottom line is, is that folks have a right to have their vote counted, and certainly this process has enfranchised a lot of Minnesotans. If you lose, will you appeal? Uh, let me just uh, respond. I'll just do one question because it's the question that's, you know, what's the next step? Let's deal with this step right now. There are, there are a lot of votes to be counted. There are still a number of issues to be cited. I'm not looking forward. I'm looking right now to see, you know, what happens. Uh, we've made a case, a very strong, compelling case. I think Joe Freeberg did a great job. Uh, talking about common sense, it's a good, great gift the good Lord gave all of us, and uh, hopefully be used by the judges, and uh, in the end we'll get ballots counted. I'm not looking beyond that right now. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, good afternoon. As Senator Coleman indicated, this was an um, extremely satisfying end to a, uh, to a rather long procedure. But at the end of the day, the ability to get uh, Minnesotans who were wrongly precluded from having their votes counted uh, into the system and to have their ballots count um, is very satisfactory. I think that uh, Joe Freeberg did a terrific job of pointing out why so many additional votes should be counted. There's the 1,360 that we put in. The Franken people indicated that they had a couple of hundred ballots uh, more that they believed should come in. The more people that are enfranchised, um, the better in this case. I think um, Joe's conversation with the judges about, well, maybe not a conversation, but Joe's um, statement to the judges about the burden of proof with which they uh, will end up looking at these ballots and deciding whether votes should count um, is extremely important because this is a state whose traditions are to enfranchise people. And what I think came out brilliantly in Joe's argument was that on election day, in county after county, the county election officials were all about enfranchising voters. And it's this court in its February 13th order that has created a set of rules not in force in any county in Minnesota on election day at all for purposes of this contest. And so the responsibility that this court now has is to figure out um, how to count votes in the same manner that they were counted on election day. Otherwise, there are due process uh, problems in terms of creating a new set of rules after the game is played. They've created the problem for themselves of having illegal votes in the count by their Friday the 13th definition if applied to the election day counts. Uh, there are the equal protection problems in uh, voters' votes counting depending on uh, where they live as opposed to how they um, filled out their ballots. And lastly, we have the question of the Secretary of State's database. Still not complete, a fact that serves to disenfranchise voters who would otherwise show up as registered uh, and witnesses who would show up as registered and therefore votes um, should be counted. I would close by um, noting that, um, that Mr. Hamilton gave a full-throated defense of the Minnesota election system on one hand, noted that it is the best in the country. It is indeed, but he really proved our point that as good as the Minnesota system is, it's not finely calibrated enough to tell who won this election because by their own count, Today, he cited 256 votes. 
that he wants to have in. They'll put in a spreadsheet that may contain more. So both sides have come down at the end of the day to concluding that this system, as good as it may be, is not accurate enough to determine who won this election and that many uh, still wrongly rejected absentee ballots should be opened and counted. So thanks very much. It's been a, um, uh, a long, really fun and enjoyable and historic. <laughs> and I look forward to all of you going back to your uh, real beats as we go back to our what passes for normal lives. Any questions? Is it odd? No. Not, not to follow state law in order to get I think your ballots in? That's not what happened. I believe what Mr. Friedberg did is to say you need to follow the laws as, as it was interpreted in the 87 counties in Minnesota on Election Day and not by some sort of alternative universe set of laws that's the Friday the 13th ruling. If they agree to reverse themselves, would you be back in court presenting evidence about those other ballots that they ruled out on Friday the 13th? Well, I think that if the court follows the standard that was in place on Election Day in Minnesota counties, first of all, it isn't really necessary for them to reverse themselves, and they'll end up opening um, the universe of ballots that should be opened, and therefore that actually cuts down tremendously on the number of legal issues that would be in play here. Actually, is a much more expeditious and efficient way to resolve this quickly. Do you have any, uh, anything to add to uh, Mr. Coleman's statement about a potential appeal if this is not going to work? We're concentrating on this. Do you expect to be back in Minnesota after today? Uh, I come for the weather and the waters often. <laughs> We have findings of fact that are um, due, I think, next Tuesday at noon, unless they, they're changing it in the Chamber's conference now. So, yes. Does that occur in open court, or is this something that's... The findings of fact? No, they're, they're written submissions. They're many, many pages long. You'll love them. They sing. At least ours do. Do the judges count the ballots, or do they just farm that out to the Secretary of State, or how's all that going? You know, that's a good question. They have not told us how they want to do it, and however they want to do it is fine. All right, everybody, thank you. Happy Friday.